Hi everybody, my name is Andrea Chakma and I'm currently a 2A Mechatronics student at the University of Waterloo and today I'll be telling you a little bit about my journey through women in engineering. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Andrea. I'm a second year Mechatronics engineering student. I am an outreach commissioner with the Engineering Society, a shadow day director with the Engineering Ambassadors, and also a Women in Engineering Outreach Squad member. So a little fun fact about me, I got to meet Tessa Virtue, who is one of my biggest role models last year, and it was super exciting for me. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit of a fun fact about myself. So when people ask me why I chose Waterloo Engineering, one word comes into mind, and that is opportunity. So Waterloo Engineering provides a ton of different opportunities for their students to sort of learn about what engineering is, but not only learn about it, but also figure out where they fit in within engineering. So a lot of the big, um, what a lot of people think about is co-op. So with co-op, you get to go out into the industry, figure out what you like, what you don't like, um, what industry you kind of want to see yourself in. And co-op is a big reason why people go into Waterloo Engineering, but there's also a lot more opportunities, such as design teams, where during your school term, you can join a design team, participate in some amazing competitions where you get to meet with industry partners from all different uh, parts of like, engineering and so forth. Also, there's a lot of different research opportunities. So for example, a lot of my friends have done research assistant jobs uh, working with the RoboHub. And so they got to work with the little mini robots and help do some artificial intelligence research as well. So there's a lot of different things that Waterloo Engineering provides and all of it is summed up into the idea of opportunities and trying to figure out where you fit in in engineering and where you see yourself growing. So with my experiences as a woman in engineering, overall my experiences have been pretty good, um, but there have been some bumps along the way. So whenever you do go into an, any engineering class, uh, classes are very much still male dominated. Um, and that is the same, whichever engineering program you decide to go into and whichever university, classes are still very much male dominated. And sometimes it can feel like you are, you sort of have to fit in within this boys club and it can feel as though you really don't belong. But at the same time, that's not always the case. The majority of the time, when you can get past the fact that there's so many boys in the classroom, you realize that you do have a very supportive community environment that you can sort of grow in and um, sort of be yourself in. So for my example, I have an amazing strong group of friends of both guys and girls, and we sort of are this sort of great friend group, and it's, so, it's a very supportive community where I can sort of be myself and know that I have them to lean back on if I do ever feel overwhelmed by the scenario that I'm in or the situation that I'm in. But even though classes are very much male dominated, it's not so much about the gender, so to speak, but it's more so about, I've had an amazing experience with every single human being in my class. And you do make those close friends and you build that community because you're stuck with the same 100 students in your cohort for the basically the rest of your life. So you very soon and very quickly learn to make friends and it's really an amazing environment to be in. Another aspect of being a woman in engineering is throughout the co-op process. So finding co-ops is hard and easy for everyone. And just because you're a girl, it doesn't make it any harder or it doesn't make it any easier. So something that I've heard from a lot of people is, oh, because you're a girl, finding co-op is so much easier because employers are always looking for diversity. That's not always the case. What employers look for is they look for a skill set um, knowing that you have the skills to properly do the job and they also look for if you have the proper attitude and the values to fit in with the company culture. So my example of this amazing co-op that I had was I worked at RBC last term and that was the most diverse group of people ever and my manager actually said that that was the most diverse group that they've had in over two, three years. It was basically 50-50 male, female, and it was an amazing experience because I had amazing female role models, but I also had male role models as well, both who are doing amazing in the industry. And so a lot of companies do look for that diversity. So just because you're a girl, yes, companies do look for diversity, but finding a co-op is not um, any easier than somebody else trying to find a co-op as well. The only thing I can do, I can say is that sometimes when you're looking for a co-op and you do get a co-op um, in certain fields and certain industries, 
you'll find that you're the only girl on the floor. And a lot of my friends have dealt with that as well. Um, just because engineering is still very much male dominated, you can find yourself being the only girl in certain scenarios, certain situations. And in that case, ma the majority of the time, it is okay. It is perfectly fine. You, get, you still get the same amazing learning experience. But something that I want to bring up is sometimes you will find yourselves in that uncomfortable position. Um, and sometimes you might find yourself in situations that you yourself don't feel comfortable in. And then that can happen in school or in co-op. It really can happen anywhere. Um, and in those cases, we do have a lot of different resources that are available if in the odd chance that it happens. We have, you can talk to your co-op advisor when you're on co-op, if you ever feel like you're uncomfortable in the working environment that you're in. On school, we have the Women's Center where they have a bunch of resources if you ever find yourself in a situation that is not the greatest. We also have mates from engineering society, so you can have peer-to-peer -peer support if you're not comfortable speaking to your friends or somebody else about it. Um, so there's a lot of different supports that are available. 99.9% .9 of the time, you will not experience a situation like that, but I think it's really important. I know some of my friends have had to deal with that kind of situation, and it doesn't happen very often, but it's important to know that we do have resources available, and amazing resources at that, um, in the case that you're ever in that situation where you feel uncomfortable. Some of the challenges that I faced as women in engineering, um, there's been a lot. Uh, and I think a lot of it has dealt with, majority of it has been sort of stemmed from the fact of imposter syndrome, feeling like you don't deserve to be here, that everybody else is better than you and you're not the greatest, um, you should not be here, you kind of got in as a fluke so to speak. And I know a lot of that stemmed from the fact that when I was in high school, a lot of guys said, oh, you only got into Waterloo Engineering because you're a girl. And they want to have a 50-50 boy-girl ratio. That's the only reason you got in. For the longest time, I internalized that and I felt that it was my fault. And I was like, I don't belong here. This isn't for me. They just chose me because I'm a girl. And I have to say that is 100% not the case. Uh, Waterloo Engineering does not look at gender when they assess your applica application. So you got in because you are an amazing student with amazing extracurriculars and you are a fantastic human being. And that is the reason you got in, not just because you're a girl. And I sort of realized that after I got into Waterloo Engineering and I started working with engineering ambassadors and sort of understanding who are the people that they sort of pick to come to Waterloo Engineering. So definitely don't ever feel like you don't deserve to be here and that you only got in because you're a girl because that is not the case. We do not look at gender. But imposter syndrome is one of the main challenges that I faced of not feeling like it belonged. And there really is no solution to getting over imposter syndrome. A lot of it is just going through the term I think at the end of first term was when I realized that, hey, I actually do belong here. And by then I had made a good group of friends. I was doing well in school and I had found extracurriculars that I was super passionate about. So definitely imposter syndrome can be a challenge that you face, but as long as you sort of work hard and find your place and find your groove, it's very easy to get over. Um, the second issue was lack of technical skills. I have never coded in my entire life before coming to Waterloo Engineering. I think I took one coding course and that was intimidating. Mechatronics Engineering has a huge, not a huge coding component, but I would say a lot of it is very much coding based. So I was very scared. I felt like I was the only one that didn't know how to code and asking for help was wrong because everybody else knew the answer. And I felt like I was asking stupid questions. Um, but just know that how I faced that challenge was realizing that there was tons of other people in my class who had not coded. So there are other people in your scenario and your situation, and most programs will teach you right from the beginning. So if you don't know how to code, or if you don't know how to use, let's say, machine tools, or there's some other technical aspect that you do not know how to do, do not worry. You'll get the opportunity to learn, and the only way to get over that is to just go out there, ask for help, even when it's hard to ask for help, even when you think it's a stupid question, make sure you ask those questions because that's when you'll actually learn and when you can get onto the level of all the other people that have been coding since like from the beginning of time or when they were little. Um, and a little positive spin on that is I used to 
very strongly disliked coding. I thought I was really bad at it. But now my next term, I'll be working as a software developer. So where I'll be legitimately coding for my entire co-op term. So there is a bright side. Um, if you don't have technical skills, don't worry about it. I know I did, but you will learn and it'll come to you. And the last challenge that I faced was trying to find a role model. So in engineering, it'd be very hard to find female role models. I was lucky during my last co-op term, I found this amazing coworker who really understood where my um, engineering journey was going and how I felt in engineering. And I could relate to her a lot, but it can be very hard to find female role models like that. My recommendation is to look for upper years. So I have two or three upper year friends, even more now that I've got sort of gotten involved with an engineering society and really reaching out to those uh, older female engineering students because they have gone through the same thing that you have gone through or very similar to, or have very similar experiences. So making sure that if you reach out to them and have a, like a nice conversation, they are more than willing to help and sort of help you um, figure out where you, what issues that you're having and where you can sort of go. It's very important to find role models, I think, because you get to learn a lot from them. And not only do you learn a lot from them, you can kind of see a bigger picture because they've gone through the same challenges that you've gone through. So definitely when trying to find role models, look for upper years that, can, that you can relate to. I know I have two or three, and I think every single one of my friends who is also a woman in engineering, they kind of held the same as well. And Women in Engineering uh, is a club uh, at Waterloo Engineering, at Waterloo Engineering. So we have a lot of different um, workshops and opportunities to network to find those role models and workshops to get those technical skills. So just this term, we ran uh, a machine tool shop uh, workshop where it was a girls only community and we learned basically how to use the different power tools during a machine shop, which was super fun. And we've had a lot of different networking events where women from all departments can come together, professors as well as students. And it's always great to just network with like-minded, um, not like-minded I would say, but more so just people that you can on the same brain wave in terms of having the same, um, just having the female to female mentorship going on there. So we women engineering has a lot of different events. So I definitely suggest getting involved with them as well. And finally, my Andrea's top five words of advice. So these are some advice that came from me as well as some of them have come up from my friends. Um, some things that we thought were amazing for women in engineering and thought we would like to hear if we were a woman coming into engineering as well. Number one, you belong here and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You deserve to be in Waterloo Engineering and you have made your place and you should rock it. I think a lot of us come in very unsure about do we belong here? Is this for us? Is this really for us? And that is a question that Obviously, we all have doubts when coming in, but just know that you belong here. You made your position here and you deserve to be here. Um, that is the biggest thing that I thought I needed to hear when coming into Waterloo Engineering. So here I am telling you. Uh, number two, get involved. Make the most out of your engineering university experience. So by getting involved, you can make a stronger community. You can find more people that aren't in your program that you can also relate to. So with through Engineering Society, I've gotten to meet people from all the different streams of engineering, which is super amazing because we all have our different skill sets and different experiences. And it's great to just go out there and network and see what other people are doing with their lives and how cool and amazing human beings there are in Waterloo Engineering. So I definitely say get involved. It's a great way to de-stress. Good to put on your resume as well in, when applying for jobs. And it's just a great way to have fun, um, make the most out of your engineering experience. Number three, be confident, put yourself out there. Um, as women, sometimes we doubt ourselves and we doubt um, what our capabilities are. For example, like when applying to a co-op job, most, most of the time guys are like, if, even if they have 20 or 30% of the things, of the qualifications required for an co-op position, they'll say, yes, I got it. But even if we're females and we have like 80%, we sometimes doubt ourselves. It's a statistic that has been seen 
um, throughout, and there has been research done on it. So my advice is be confident, put yourself out there, apply to those jobs that you think you're not going to get. Um, just because you never know what might happen. I applied to a job like that. And now I'm going back to the same company again. And they thought that I was amazing at the first job when I thought I was not going to be great. I was petrified, but I built up my confidence and put myself out there. Now I'm going back to the company. So definitely confidence is key. It's not always there. You kind of have to build it up and kind of push yourself, but definitely recommend being confident and putting yourself out there. Number four, practice self-care. It's super important to take care of yourself. For me, that is going out, doing extracurriculars, volunteering. I love volunteering. I feel like it's the most amazing thing anybody could ever do. Um, but some of my friends practice self-care by just staying in and watching a movie. Waterloo Engineering is a very rigorous program and that can be very stressful. Um, that's why I say definitely practice self-care. Make sure you're taking care of yourself, um, getting the same nutrients, getting sleep, um, and really being there for yourself. That's super important. And the last one is something that one of my friends actually uh, said at another Women in Engineering event that I thought was super important that I don't really think of because I kind of already have a support system in place, but I definitely realized that within the first year, building that support system is super important. Um, finding those people that will build you up and help you build up is super important because you always want to surround yourself with positivity and those people that are going to support you rather than tear you down or make yourself make you doubt yourself so I have a great support system of guys and girls and my family all of which are super fantastic whenever I need to make a big decision or I'm feeling stressed out and I just need a second opinion or somebody to uh, say hey, what you're feeling is totally okay, and it's amazing, like, it's fine. Just take some time for yourself. You got this. You can do it. Um, so definitely finding your support system, making strong friendships. Sometimes it doesn't come easily, but I definitely have to say it will happen. You will slowly find that support system. And that is Andrea's top five words of advice. So to conclude, I hope to see all of you on campus soon. If you ever have any questions about women in engineering, uh, questions, concerns, just what did you do in high school or what can I be doing right now to sort of help me prepare for Waterloo Engineering, you can send me an email. I love getting emails and I will always respond to every email that I get. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation and I hope to see all of you soon.